Hello and welcome to the service of worship for January the 3rd, 2021. We made it, folks, and so glad that you are tuning in this morning. I'm John Hilly, pastor of East Brentwood Presbyterian Church. And let us begin this first service in the new year by lighting the candle. And hearing the scripture passage for today is from the Gospel of John, first chapter. And we hear these words, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. And then John continues on and concludes in verse 14. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen the glory, the glory as of the father's son, full of grace and truth. So glad you have joined us this morning. This is kind of a Vesper style worship service here on this first Sunday in the new year as we have felt the need to kind of just slow it down. I felt the need to give um, our staff some and myself some Sabbath rest. I've come into the sanctuary early in the morning to record this and to share this with you. Um, we wanted to connect our um, community to God and to one another, so we're providing this sort of um, brief service that doesn't follow the normal form that we have. Uh, what will happen is I will uh, read the scripture passage or the lectionary text from the Hebrew scriptures this morning. We'll share a prayer, and then we'll turn it over to Lindsay Hines Brown, who will, in her four minutes, uh, tell a story uh, from First Peter, as well as uh, address the theme for today, which is engagement and resolve. She says she speaks to the children, but you will find something useful just what, no matter what your age will be. Then um, Nate and I looked back into our files, and we found a podcast from four years ago. My, how time flies. When we were um, in 2016, we were heading into a new uh, a transfer of power to a new president as we entered 2017. At that time, Syria was on our minds, um, and, uh, and in the new year, we did a podcast called New Beginnings. This is the year of new, this is the day of new beginnings. And in that, uh, Nate uh, composes a song about Aleppo, Syria, uh, we also talk about engagement and resolve. It seemed fitting, and so we are going to rebroadcast that as part of our music and our spoken word for today. And so uh, it will go, um, after I finish speaking, then to Lindsay, then to this podcast, which is 20 minutes. And I hope that you will enjoy that time of music and of spoken word. But right now, uh, let us hear the, the scripture uh, passage for t today. And it is from the book of Jeremiah, reading in the 31st chapter, verses 7 through 14. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will lead them, letting them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble, for I have become a father to Israel and Ephraim, my, is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the crossroads and coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will give them the priests their full, their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. What a great word here on this first Sunday of the new year. The 
prayer is a prayer that I share with you. It was written by a friend of mine who I became reacquainted with, our family did, when we were in South Africa earlier this year. Sue Ellen was a lifelong educator in uh, the university system in South Africa and has changed the lives of thousands and thousands of uh, Africans who are going into post-secondary education. She wrote this prayer, she's a beautiful prayer writer, and she wrote this prayer as she was facing brain cancer. The cancer has not returned, but the lesions has made it necessary for her to retire from her career of teaching at the age of 60. And so I thought about her and her prayer, Light of the World, and share it as our prayer on this first day of the year. We praise you, O God of light. It is your light that pierces the darkness of evil, exposing our human cravings for personal power and control. It is your light that shines into the dark corners of our woundedness and our greatest fears. It is your light that reveals the truth, opens up our minds, and softens our hearts. In your light we find your love, and in your love we find freedom. As children of your light, we pray for the freedom to love ourselves, to care for our neighbors, to love our enemies, to act justly no matter what the personal cost, to transform rather than to conform. We thank you for men and women throughout history who have shown your light into the darkness of their particular time and place. They are a sobering and yet exhilarating reminder of us to our own calling. We thank you for the people in our own lives who make Christ, the light of the world, a reality to us, whose quiet presence strengthens us during difficult times, whose belief in us helps us to believe in ourselves, whose acts of compassion melt our hardness, whose faith restores our dying hope. They are for us the incarnation of the living Christ. Amen. We lift this candle of hope to you, Sue Ellen Shea. I lift it to all of those who need the light of Christ in your life this day. And now it's my pleasure to turn it over to Lindsay, who will talk about engagement and resolve. I think you'll find it helpful, and I know that you'll find the podcast and the beautiful music that Nate has done along with me will be helpful to you. May God bless you on this first Sunday of the new year. Hi everyone, it is January 3rd, 2021. We have rung in the new year and celebrated the possibilities of the year ahead. And so I was asked to give a little reflection during my time with children on the topic of engagement for the year ahead. Now, Pastor John and Mr. Nate recorded an amazing podcast a few years ago on this topic. And so I thought I could see what I could bring in in the year 2021 that could bring their message alive to those of us who are living about four years after they recorded their first podcast on this topic. And so I searched the scriptures for our time with children and I found this one that I thought was particularly telling for our day. It's from 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. It says, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I'm actually recording this before Christmas. So in my house right now, there are still tons of actual gifts around the tree. Here's one. I just dug in and grabbed one. This one is to Connor from Lucy. I wonder what's inside. Gifts are always exciting. Each one is a little different. And in our house, we make sure we pick out a special gift that really speaks to the person receiving it. Maybe it's something they really want. Maybe it's something they excel at and we wanna give them the tools to practice that more. Maybe it's something that they need to work on. 
And so we give them something to help with that. Sometimes it's just silly, something we think would make them laugh. But in 1 Peter, we hear that each of us has received a gift from God. And we're not talking here about shiny presents under the tree, but about our talents, the things that we excel at, the special things that we can do that maybe others can't. And so when I think about this new year, for me, it's full of possibilities. We have the COVID vaccine coming about. We have other exciting changes happening in our country. I know parents are eager for kids to go back to school. Kids can't wait to see their friends. I want you to think about the gifts that you have been given from God, the things that you excel at, that you can use to make our world a better place. And I want you to think about how you can engage those gifts to help others. We can't individually fix all the problems in the world, but through the gifts that God gives us, we can do our little part. So as you launch yourself into this new year, reflect on the gifts, reflect on God's grace, and engage in our church, in your school, and in your family to do your part to live out God's big story of love and make that story a little bit bigger for the folks around you. Let's have a prayer before we go. Hands way up in the air, touch your head to quiet your mind, your chin to quiet your mouth, and pray with me. Giver of gifts and giver of grace, bless this new year for us. Give us lots of chances to make your big story of love come alive for all of your children. In your name we pray, amen. On this first day of the new year, it's time to hear of fresh starts. Appropriately, the song that opens this podcast is called This is the Day of New Beginnings. Fresh starts can come at any time, especially when following in the way of Jesus, but it also comes with the flip of the calendar to a new year. We have prepared a podcast of music, word, and liturgy for you to use for your own individual discernment. You may choose to listen to this while taking to the streets for a morning run or walk as part of your New Year's resolution. Perhaps you'll listen to it collectively with friends and family, maybe even as you sit together around a coffee shop table or a family table for the New Year's Day meal. Ah, the tradition of the New Year's Day meal. Hey, Nate, what, uh, what was the tradition around your house when it came for a New Year's Day meal? We'd have uh, pork and sauerkraut every year. That was my grandma's tradition she thought it would bring us good luck in the new year and i hate sauerkraut so i i dreaded that meal every year i like pork but the problem is my grandma would cook the pork and the sauerkraut together so the sauerkraut would just take over the pork and really the whole house in terms of the smell all right well oh sauerkraut i'm with you on that especially on new year's day but pork i uh, i agree with you on that's a good centerpiece and in the South, where I grew up in Louisiana and North Carolina and Kentucky, we would surround that pork with uh, some greens and some black-eyed peas and maybe some lima beans as well, uh, along with cornbread, uh, all to make you wealthy and, and wise and lucky. So um, if you all are uh, on this New Year's Day having a meal, I hope you enjoy it. Now back to where we're going with this uh, theme here, the theme that uh, 
we're focusing on as we close out 2016 and step into 2017 is engagement. Yeah, yeah, we know that's a pretty wide sweeping theme that could go in any number of directions. Nate Strasser here has put his composition skills towards creating an, I think, an especially thoughtful piece, which Nate's going to tell you about shortly. And uh, I'm going to offer some reflections, including somewhat personal thoughts that are specific to my life as a pastor. And it's our hope that you can find something uplifting and useful for you in your life as we stand on the threshold of a new year. We prepared this uh, podcast in lieu of a worship service at the East Brentwood Presbyterian Church in Nashville, Tennessee, where we serve. Um, We prepared a light liturgy that you can access by clicking on the link or going to our website. Nate, the piece that you open with is this wonderful hymn by the writer Brian Wren. It's a hymn that's working its way into a lot of faith communities. As a musician and a composer, uh, what, tell me what you like about this. What I love about the hymn is how well the music really fits with the lyrics. It's, it's just so full of optimism. I think too often in our hymnal and a lot of hymnals, we find lyrics and melodies that were simply stuck together because they have the same meter to them. But in this song, the marriage between the, the lyrics and the melody are so strong that we really feel the spirit of the piece come through. Well said. I, you know, This is a day of new beginnings, time to remember and move on, time to believe what love is bringing, laying to rest the pain that's gone. Then let us with the Spirit's daring step from the past, I agree with you, Nate, and leave behind our disappointment, guilt, and grieving, seeking new paths and sure to find. Nice, nice, nice work, Brian Wren. So to the theme engagement, you think of the word engagement, and in this new year what may come to mind are engagements that may have taken place between two people who plan to get married and have set a wedding date in 2017. And then there is how to engage in an exercise regimen, so time to engage and lace up those sneakers, folks. Also, I did a Google search on the word and found that trending in the New York Times list of most read articles is one where experts give advice on how to have more engaging conversations in everyday life. And one of the experts in social connections is asked if we should worry about interrupting people when we strike up a conversation. I I thought his response interesting. Generally, people are always bored, he said. You can pretty much rest assured that most people are willing to lose a moment of time to engage in a conversation with somebody who will listen to them. Interesting commentary that most of us walk around bored. So to you introverts out there, you may want to look at this article for tips in 2017, or at least be made aware that we extroverts may feel more emboldened to strike up a conversation in the checkout line of the grocery store with you. The flip of the calendar brings a a new year, and within most of us, a variety of reactions. Among them are feelings of possibility and resolve. Now, of possibility, the lyrics in the song, This is the day of new beginnings, say we're not bound by our past. Step from the past, we can leave behind our disappointment, guilt, and grieving, seeking new paths and sure to find. Now, what possibilities await if you can do that? And as to how this might happen, I like what Parker Parker Palmer says in uh, An intentional asking yourself the question if something, whether it's a thought you have or an action you take, is life-giving or what Palmer calls death-dealing. And the year before us holds daily opportunities for us to choose the life-giving over the death-dealing, whether it's in our relationships and how you conduct yourself with what is said and in your ability to forgive yourself or others. Engagement in things and mindsets that are life-giving can be freeing, but it's not easy. For help, I think we're going to need to surround ourselves with people who understand the difference between what is life-giving and is death-dealing. For engagement is not something we can do all on our own. We need support, which means to be in dialogue and to have community support and to have people around us who model just how to do this. There's another thing that came to my mind when it comes to possibilities in this theme of engagement. When it comes to being being more engaged, you don't just put yourself out there into the universe hoping something's going to happen. 
Engagement's always concrete. It's always particular. And in the digging down into the particular and the concrete, you're likely to find the doorway to the universal and maybe even to a deeper awareness of God in your life. We just celebrated Christmas, and we heard the story of the concrete and the particular. There was one stable, one Mary, one night, one baby. That speaks to every day, everywhere. Songwriters know that the life-giving that takes place in the concrete and the particular, Nashville is full of writers who, if they're very good, know how to focus on this particular. I I think of the legendary songwriter Kent Blasey, who he worked with Garth Brooks when Garth was a 25-year-old newbie in Nashville from Oklahoma, and they wrote the song, If Tomorrow Never Comes. Uh, It was the song that launched Garth into uh, a career that led to his selling more records being sold than anyone else in the business. And they started with this concrete image, this image uh, and the feeling that comes with lying next to your wife and watching her sleep. And with their lyrics, they start digging deeper with that emotion that we can all relate to of having lost loved ones who are now gone and who we wish we had let them know that we love them. And they dig a little deeper and they reach something that rings true to all. Tell the people that you love while they're still alive. So what's the point here? For one, of course, to let the people you know and love that you love them. Uh, But in this invitation to deepen this sense of engagement in 2017, I encourage you to focus your attention and your actions on something particular and and concrete and and stay with it. Uh, Be it something creative. Be be it something that stretches you physically and dig deeper. It's going to take work, but you're, you're, you're likely to find maybe even the the holy in this effort. So, Nate, why don't you share with us what you've been thinking about when it comes to this theme of engagement here in the new year, and and then I'll come back and I'll share some of my final thoughts on uh, resolution and, and resolve when it comes to 2017. So one of the most haunting Christmas songs to me is Christmas in Sarajevo. It's one of my favorites, and I actually played that on my Christmas concert here at church a couple weeks ago. It's an instrumental medley of God Rest You Merry Gentlemen and Carol of the Bells. The piece describes a lone cello player playing a forgotten Christmas carol in war-torn Sarajevo. The amazing part was all of this devastation that was going on in Sarajevo was brought on by his own people. It wasn't some outside force or some natural disaster. It was his own people, and I think that's really what broke the cello player's heart. So he would go every night to the town square and play Mozart and Beethoven. And it was such an incredible contrast as bombs and cannon fire went off around him. Fast forwarding to present day, we see another city under attack that is Aleppo. 
After Sarajevo, one wouldn't think the world could once again watch idly as the city burns to the ground, but that's where we are. So one of my New Year's resolutions for 2017 is to better educate myself and those around me about what is happening in our world. The more you know about a crisis, the more you can help. Between working roughly 60 hours a week, and raising a two-year-old, and it's easy for me to stay in my little bubble, making sure my bills are paid and that my family of three is happy and healthy. But Aleppo has woken, awoken in me the desire to expand outside that bubble, to see the true suffering that our fellow humans are enduring in other parts in the world, as well as in our own backyard. So this is a piece that I wrote with all of that in mind. I hope that it inspires you to do the same in 2017. Wow, Nate, I really like that. It's um, it, it's really quite beautiful, and it's kind of that haunting tilt to it. Uh, while you're playing it, I couldn't keep from thinking about uh, that picture that we saw of the little boy Omran as he was in the back of an ambulance with covered in dust from bombing, uh, sitting passively and alone in the back of an ambulance, and you know, the question is, you know, who is there to attend to him? And s certainly not me, as I'm out and about with my head covered in my own events and things that need to get done. So I'm not sure how to follow that, but um, let me say a few words about, uh, personally about resolve. And when it comes to engagement, and here's something I must admit, I, I feel a bit unsettled about 2017. I'm, I'm glad to get 2000, 2016 behind me, but I'm thinking about what will be asked of me when it comes to my own resolve, to my own calling and work as a pastor. In 2017, we're, we're going to have a new president, one who has made statements over the course of 2016 that I, I find personally pretty troubling, and one for me at, 
at odds with the morality and teachings of the scriptures. And even events during 2016 revealed how also divided we are and have conflicting visions of our life together as a nation. And then I think about our own congregation, and I mean, we really are privileged to be at a place where we like to think that all types of diversity are held together by this kind of common center in Christ. And in fact, at our leadership meeting in November, I said to the elders, the center here will hold. It'll always hold. But if I'm truthful and I'm aware, I must realize that the inauguration of a new president in January is it's going to put stress on our understanding of our church's mission. It's uncanny that one of the scripture texts in the life of the church that's put before us on New Year's Day is this text from Matthew 25 that reminds us that when we take care of the hungry, the stranger, the sick, and those in prison, we take care of God. And woe to those who don't do that. Among us are folks who work and advocate as Christians for the church to care for the poor, the marginalized, homeless, the uninsured, and believe it's important to provide hospitality to the stranger in our midst. But also among us are those who hold that it's time for us and the church to do our part in making America great again, whatever that may mean for them. I believe our anathema to the gospel of Jesus Christ is love for a world in which he was literally willing to die for. And I may say things that people aren't going to agree with. And when I do, uh, I hope that they will let me know and, and we can talk it through. And all the while, we will try to love each other because that's what engagement's about. And after all, isn't that what Jesus showed us, this one we follow in the footsteps of in 2017? So Happy New Year, everyone, and God bless. Happy New Year.